Hello there, this is Jose Rodriguez, or a.k.a. J. Toolman, 1949. It's been a long time since I started this channel on machining and miniature making, so I want to apologize on my just seemingly long delay between videos. But I've been busy with so many other projects, I have just haven't had time to do something new to provide you with new content for this new channel that I'm trying to get kick-started. Now this is my mini lathe that I use for mostly everything to do with machining. It is the Little Machine Shop Model 4100 High Torque Mini Lathe. Everything that I have at this point really came from them and it did not come as a gift. I had to purchase this and I do sell my instructional material in DVD form through this company as well as through my private website. But I'll, I'll put those links at the bottom for you guys if uh, you're all interested in full content DVDs concerning not only this machine but the mini lathe that they also sell. Now I just want to give you a few of the features. It is a 7 inch swing by 12 length. They do have a 7 by 14 I believe as well. It is cast iron. This is Chinese made of course and it's cast iron, you really have to be very diligent with these types of machines. You have to keep them well oiled. The surfaces should be, if you're not using the machine for quite a while, you should oil the surfaces. Make sure that they do not rust as they will readily do so in a humid environment such as the Midwest or the South of the US. Now it comes basically with this. It has your Morse Taper 2 tailstock. It is a very nice freewheeling type um, what they call the live center. It has a graduated spindle on the tailstock. You operate it by turning this crank. I don't want to get in your way. Now to loosen and to lock it in place you just use this lever. In the rear you have a tailstock locking lever. As you can see it operates very very smoothly. You have your cross slide, compound slide, and this is the funny thing, it is actually graduated not in hundreds but in thousands but let's see it is 10, 20, 30 and 40 thousands per turn so it's not an easy thing to just do you know like we normally would do 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 it's actually 40 thousands per turn. So you have to be a little bit more diligent with your math. 10, 20, 30, and 40 as well on the cross slide. The lathe allows you to do live feed by simply bringing the locking lever down which operates the uh, split nut around the lead screw. This of course allows you to also cut threads on the lathe. At this point I have the unit set up for boring. I have a quick change tool. It's an accessory you can buy for it. And I have the boring bar set up with a aluminum cylinder here. Now let me go ahead and uh, tell you a little bit more about the chuck. The standard chuck that comes with this lathe is a three jaw chuck just like most others. Again you can see that I really need to make sure that I keep this well oiled. It's beginning to rust slightly here. I've had this for about a year now. I had an earlier 7x10 model which is one of the original ones and that was sold through another company. And so again make sure that you use something like WD-40 just every once in a while with a paper towel. If you do get rust you can go over it with some very very fine sandpaper or even steel wool and then just apply a little bit of oil. Just keep, keep the lathe uh, well lubricated and you should not have any rust buildup. Remember this is, this is um, cast iron and it will rust like crazy if you don't keep track of it. Got to keep on it. Now the control panel is electronic. You have a, an off button and the power button. As you can see nothing happens but you have to turn on the power button first and then the lathe will begin. And 
if you actuate your lead screw, you can see that the advance is operating automatically. The rate is like 100 TPI, equivalent to 100 TPI thread. So that would be one hundredth of an inch per revolution. If you ever need to reverse, you just hit the reverse and you are reversing. Why would you do this? Well, there are cases where you want to cut a reverse thread or sometimes you want to actually cut from the rear with an upside down tool. And those are rare occasions, but and nevertheless, it allows you to do so. All right, so let me show you a little safety feature. If I have the lathe on, on and I lift it, it will turn off by itself. So if you do not like this guard in place, and I don't mind it at all, then you can just disconnect it from the actual flange. But the flange itself operates a little switch located back here which uh, will turn off the lathe automatically if you were to lift that during use. My opinion, well off the box it's not as perfectly set up or adjusted as you would imagine. You have to adjust your gibs or jibs both on the cross slide as well as the compound slide. Other than that, uh, it doesn't come completely coated with grease like some of the other Chinese exports do. And it has proven to be a darn good little machine. There's nothing that I really cannot do with it if I stay within my range. One thing you must remember is that just because this is a 7 inch swing does not necessarily mean you can turn the outside of a 7 inch disc or object nor can you expect to really realistically work on a 7 inch diameter piece of stock or workpiece. So realistically I kind of tend to stay within 3 inch diameter type workpieces. If I'm building a steam engine and I need a flywheel that's about two and a quarter to 3 inches then I'm good to go it's fine and I will not have any kind of uh, capacity problems where things are getting in the way. Oh, one more thing. This all probably pretty much all Chinese lathes have a flange mount for your chucks. So they tend to well actually I think that's a good thing rather than a threaded mount because the flange mount actually sets your your positioning or your centering. In other words, your your location of the chuck is pretty much exact regardless of how you um, insert it. That that flange will automatically pre-center your chuck. Now there are three nuts back here and three studs located in the back of the chuck body. So you basically insert the chuck and then very difficultly screw on the uh, nuts that are located back here. There's not much room. You barely have room for just a little flat end uh, wrench to be able to lock them into position. You could also buy a four jaw chuck for it, which allows you to then independently center your workpiece. Run out about a thousand, thousand and a half. You also have included in your purchase a set of outside type gripping jaws, which allows you to grip larger diameter workpieces. This only has a capacity of about two inches uh, gripping from the inside. Okay and if you try to grip from the actual chuck jaw faces themselves it's actually about an, an inch and a half not even total capacity here are the specs seven inch over the uh, bed 4.3 inches over the saddle distance between centers is 12.2 cross light travel 2.6 and it also gives you the uh, equivalence in metric Hole through the spindle is only 0.8. It used to actually be 0.5 something. And so like half an inch. Spindle taper. This is a Morse 3 taper. Tailstock taper. Morse 2. Spindle, spindle motor. 0.67 horsepower. 100 watt. Spindle speed from 50 to 2500 RPM. Power requirements 120. This is the 120 model. Your range of threads that you can cut on the lathe is 4 to 
10 TPI. The weight is quite hefty, 97 pounds. Lubrication, oil daily with SAE 30 weight oil. So you can just use the same oil you would use on your, say, your lawnmower. And you would be good to go. All right, so I hope this um, answered a few of the questions you may have had about these types of uh, mini lathes. This is what I use. I use this almost weekly. I'm not machining as much as I used to, but uh, hopefully for my new channel, I'm going to go ahead and start doing a lot more little projects and demonstrations and post them for all of you to see. There's a lot of goodies that you can get for this machine, and I have been collecting for years. So in the near future, I'm going to start doing videos on some of my collection of small and weird little tools for both milling and turning on the lathe. Okay, so until the next time, please, if you like this video, hit the like button. Please do subscribe. I really need help with this channel. I'm trying to get it launched. And any questions you might have, you know where to put them. I will definitely answer you. And if you have any questions at all about this type of tooling, this type of machinery, don't hesitate to ask. I'm, I'm rather close with the company that sells these. And I can provide you with anything you ask about these. Okay, so until the next time, happy machining. Bye-bye.